Good morning, greetings, peace and love. Welcome to Word Up, the class all about poetry, spoken word, and short stories. My name is Kimberly Wright. Thanks for joining today. Last week, we were finishing up on our 15 types of short poetic forms. Um, we're gonna give a couple of more people a chance to join class. And um, also, if anybody wants to expound or share one of these poetic forms that they wrote today, feel free. And also, I gave a lesson for everybody to write funny poems. Um, however, I am not ready with my poem. My poem is supposed to be about uh, students as it pertains to uh, I guess it could be about any type of student, but I am going to write about uh, senior citizens as being my student. We have Miss Sherry Hartnett. She was supposed to write a funny poem about food. Jacqueline Lattimore, a funny poem about youth. Jean Blackshear Harris, a funny poem about aging. Vicki B. Myers, a funny poem about sex. And I have Mr. Ronnie Clark writing a funny poem about nature. So right now I'm just going to share a piece by Key Wayne Wadley called Steak and Potatoes. All right. In all honesty, I think what I truly desired was to be put on a plate and be devoured piece by piece my attention, all my free time, everything that no one else could see with knife and fork, to be taken apart and devoured tastefully with nothing left except the juice of where I lay, the tough parts that take time to cut revealed in an instant, to be desired in mutual attraction, a certain craving, covered in salt, pepper, a slice of butter, all of my interests, my habits, the anticipation of being sizzled and flipped on a cast iron skillet, served fresh on a plate. A baked potato on the side to bring out the taste. In all honesty, I think I'll have a steak. All right, and then uh, I have this particular piece called Oodles of Joy. Oodles of Joy. By Khalil Franklin. Oodles of joy. In the morning of every day I start, I make a food that's really smart. Crunch them, rip them, and pour them out as saliva pools form in my mouth. Put it in the mic for just about three, impatiently watching those beautiful noodles waiting for me. When the time is up, I pop it open and take them out and start shoving oodles of noodles into my mouth. All right. So right now, I'm gonna see if you all, um, anybody out there ready to share any pieces that they have for today? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Miss Vicky, um, what are you gonna do your, your funny poem? Yes. Okay. I wrote two, but I'm gonna read the first one first. And uh, my poem has been inspired uh, by uh, a nursery rhyme. Y'all remember Humpty Dumpty stood on the wall. Humpty, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All yes. The, all the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty together again. Yes. A poem uh, called Humping on a Wall. My assignment was sex and to do something funny about sex without being uh, X-rated. <laughs> so here it is. Humping on a wall. Remember the rhyme about a great fall when Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall? The king 
His horses and his men were nearby, as I recall. Were the queen and Humpty at it again, frolicking, rolling, and humping naked skin to skin? And at their great climax, hum Humpty did fall, tumbling and rolling, falling, and pulling the queen from the great wall. Seen by the king as he rolled through the wall's gate, Humpty and the queen knew of their fate. All the king's horses and all the king's men watched as the naked queen and, hum and Humpty tumbled within. So sad that Humpty cracked all apart while the queen got up and ran away like a tart. <laughs> the moral of the story we all recall don't make love on the king's castle wall <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> don't hump the dump that was excellent excellent <laughs> don't okay. hump the dump <laughs> I'll listen to that go next because I just had great fun writing that thing so you want to break up your piece or you want to do your second piece and let somebody else go, it's up to you. Well, I'll, I'll you read your piece if you want me to. Okay. You said you wrote two pieces. Okay, I wrote two. That and, was excellent. And, and this one is called uh, That Thing and Teenage Boys. Uh, my inspiration was my grandmother was always talking to, very frankly to us teenagers, especially to our teenage boys in the family. She'd just say, I'm praying for you, okay? So here's my uh, poem about that thing and teenage boys. I'm praying for you as you keep using that thing, zipping it in and out again. You're probably thinking you're having great fun, but I'll tell you, young man, your problem's just begun. At first, the sex is awesome and good. Next, you'll be wishing if you just could. The sores you get will swell that thing's head. You'll pee and scream seeing bloody red. Diseases are waiting in some little hole. So keep it zipped in or you'll pay with your soul. <laughs> My grandmother was always praying. <laughs> that was really, really good and it was very tasteful. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. That was really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and very funny, very funny. So, um, all right, now we're gonna go to Miss Jean. You ready, love? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, your, your uh, funny poem was supposed to be on aging, but if you don't have that poem today, you can just recite what you like. I, I, I have it on aging. Oops, where'd I go? I think I lost it. Wait a minute, yeah, I'm back. Okay. I wrote two poems. I wrote a acrostic and I wrote a, a sonnet. Okay. Okay, my acrostic, aging. A, allowing life to flow to me. G, giving into whatever occurs. I, ignoring those who make me sad in never ever feeling bad. G, growing more lovely every day, enjoying life in every way. That's my acrostic. Okay, my sonnet is called My Love. He's with me almost every night and knows exactly how to please. Even before I turn out the light, he has put my body at ease. Just knowing that he is all mine, making me feel young and alive, I can sleep from nine to five. No greater love will I ever find. There's nowhere else I'd rather be than having him close by my side. He's the most perfect companion you'll ever see. 
the best that life can provide. Helping my body, putting my body at total ease, knowing exactly how to please. I never want him to go. I want him never to go away. Who is this man? My Ben Gay. <laughs> That was funny. Very good. Good, 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 good. Especially putting your body at ease and all that. Your big yes, close by he yourself. did. <laughs> that was really genius. Thank you. <laughs> so good. All right. Do we have any, do we have uh, Miss Jacqueline Lattimore or Mr. Ronnie, anybody? Ready with their funny poems? Uh oh, I didn't give no funny poems. Yeah, you probably wasn't in class last week. It's no problem. Does anybody no. have a poem that they want to share that you was probably working on from the 15 types of short poems? I do. All right, Miss Sally Dawson. I hope I did this right. Okay, you can you can critique it. What are you doing? The pantoon? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right, the title of it is Retirement. Okay, let's go read to the kids at hospital, my friend said to me. I would much rather rest and play cards. Let's go to the aquarium, visit the fish under the sea. I want to sit by the pond and watch the mallards. I would much rather read and play cards. Each one has their own way of spending the day. I want to sit by the pond and watch the mallards. Our differences of using time are on display. Each one has their own way of spending the day. Some like to travel, visit, garden, and enjoy classes. Our differences of using time are on display. Some would like to be at pools doing splashes. Because we are retired, we shouldn't stop living. Let's go to the aquarium, visit the fish under the sea. We can mentor and volunteer. We shouldn't stop giving. Let's go read to kids at hospital, my friend said to me. Now, I had a, I had a, quite a few issues with this pen thing. I see you had called me and left a message. I couldn't get back with you at the time because I was uh, out of town. But I was saying to the class last week that I hope you had gotten it together. But I think that was a really good rendition. Uh, I was at, I guess because I was looking at so many examples, examples, and then uh, some of the uh, research I did said they should the poem should be the each line should be eight to twelve syllables, and I'm like, how do you do that? And it was just too much for me, so I just, <laughs> I just wrote what I thought. I tried to keep the rhyming. I tried to keep the A B rhyming pattern. And uh, at the same time, switch the lines like they were supposed to be. Uh, one beginning at the second line and the next sound good. Uh. Switching it out. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, it is a bit much to take in and to get all of the syllables right plus the actual rhyme pattern, but. You know, you tried and, you know, you can continue to develop on that. Like, uh, I'll continue to give a few more lessons on uh, poems that have rhyme pattern and certain syllables so that, you know, something more simple that so that you all can uh, practice on them more and get it. Yeah. I started watching the cognitive uh, college and asked you if I could just do a limerick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> no problem. Even but I if said, you, it's more if, of a challenge. 
even if you're inspired to do another piece, you can just go ahead because we'd love to hear any pieces that you have to share. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Anybody out there, uh, Miss Jacqueline Lattimore, did you get a chance to write your funny poem about you? You have to unmute yourself. Mine is not so funny. I, uh, I just put, did youth. It's, it's fine. Okay, because I didn't know you said funny, too. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay, here's one. I wrote two. And some of the poems that I saw, I did Tanka. I, you told me to do Tanka. I had written it down. That's it's fine. Not, That's okay. fine as well. Uh, and some of the Tanka poems I noticed had short lines, not five, seven, no, no, yes, seven, five, seven, seven. I was surprised. Yeah, sometimes people might write different styles of a certain type of poem. So if that could like help you at all, but still, I just recommend that you do your own thing, but just try to stick to the rules of the poem as much as possible. Okay. Um, this is about kids behind bars. There was a movie on Hulu about kids behind bars. Children, I know how you feel. Played like cards in a deal. Know that you are young, black, intelligent. Kids behind bars, you are stars. Although you have some scars. That was one. And here's the other one, children. Uh, uh, at the S Summer Soul Festival, when I saw that on Hulu, it was suggested by my daughter that I look at it and my art instructor also. Check it out, he said. Okay. From Nina to Stevie Wonder, joy spread through the air. Black, red, Puerto Ricans bonding and rejoicing. Melanated beauty shone in hot sparkling sun. Very good, very good. That was for the kids, children. So that was your second piece? Yes. Okay, great job, great job. Very powerful. And everybody should watch Soul Summer on Hulu because it's very interesting. Okay, so Soul Summer. Uh, I think it's called Soul Summer of Soul. Soul. I watched. Okay, Summer of Soul. Oh, Summer of Soul. <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to put that in the chat. Yeah, it's information that's been hidden for 25 years. Nobody showed this information, and they have a lot more, too, that they found. It uplifts black children and black people. Okay. All right. So I just put that in the chat. Uh, all right. Good job, Miss Jacqueline. Miss Jean. I have a quickie that I wrote to kind of. Make a smile a little bit, I hope. So Look in the mirror and you will see an older person looking at ye. Know as we age, we will get smarter. Just look at Jimmy Carter. <laughs> Amen. That was cute. Okay. Amen. All right, Miss Jean, you're so colorful. What in the world? All right, do we have any other? Mr. Ronnie, did you write anything in a funny poem on nature? Uh, yeah, and you also, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, you also assigned me to write a nonet. A nonet, yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to read the nonet first. Okay. Uh, it's called Upside Down. The startled squirrel scurries along the ledge, then jumps 
into the dew wet grass. There are little potholes in the pine straw, remnants of his search for breakfast. Now he's clinging upside down on the oak tree trunk, eyeballing me with an acorn in his mouth. Read that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what okay. I was giving to ask. Was that nine lines? Yes. Okay, can you oh wow. Okay. Can you like can you like do like a hand gesture when you read each line? Okay. Okay, I love it. Keep we want you to read it again. All right. Can you do like some kind of hand gesture when you read each separate line. Okay. Upside down. The startled squirrel scurries along the ledge, then jumps into the dew wet grass. There are little potholes in the pine straw, remnants of his search for breakfast. Now he's clinging upside down on the oak tree trunk, eyeballing me with an acorn in his no. <laughs> that was cute. Uh, That's really say. good. So uh, if you all don't know, a nunette consists of nine lines. And the first line has nine syllables. And it descends all the way down with eight syllables, seven, six, five, until you get to one. So that's why he's showing you. Right now, his last line had one syllable, which was mouth. mouth. One word, they're words. A one word and syllable. Yeah, oh, yes, one okay. sound, yes. So that's really, really beautiful. Upside down, we love it. Thank you. All right, so you have your other piece, sir. Yeah. Um, this is entitled Fiddler Crab Player Player. And let me just say, a fiddler crab, I was watching a nature program, and they had this little thing about a fiddler crab. And a fiddler crab has one large claw. Really disappointed for the rest of his body. Yeah. Here we go. Fiddler crab, player, player. Miss Lady Crab, my name is Romando. And let me just say, you got the finest eight legs I ever seen. <laughs> and I got a sweet pad on the beach, dug it myself. Why don't you crab walk by before the tide rolls in? I'll play you a jig, show you a good time. You can play with my big claw or not. <laughs> if we really dig each other, you can start a clutch. And yeah, baby, after we party, I'll bury you in the sand just the way you like it. And by the way, butter sauce, my name is Romando. <laughs> Pando, Provando, Provando, Romando. <laughs> hey, butter sauce. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> thank you, thank you. That was really good. So you were visualizing all that when you uh, wrote it? Uh, yeah, you, I, I, most of the time when I write something, I visualize it or I've actually seen it. So oh, that's good. That's good. So that was really, really good, Mr. Ronnie. Thank you. He enjoyed that. All right. Any of you beautiful young people, Miss Gloria Langley, anybody have any piece, Miss Betty Coleman, any pieces to share? I don't. I have missed so many uh, lessons till I'm trying to catch up uh, with with the different types that you've already presented. So I'm writing them down from your board there. Don't worry about catching up. You just, um, you know, you are where you are anytime that you come to class. And just like last week, what happened was we have 15 types of short poetic poems. We all um, took one of the poetic poems and then the next week we switched out and then the next week we switched out again because what I wanted you to do was get familiar with how to write some of these forms in case you wanted to use them later in your writings. Like 
You might feel like you want to write a haiku poem or an acrostic. So I'm just going to go with go through with you these particular pieces so that, and you can look them up if you like, but I'm going to go through these particular pieces so that you'll know how to spell them at least. The first one is acrostic. Are you familiar with the acrostic poem? I am not. Okay, the acrostic poem is when you uh, use a word like Gloria and you write the word Gloria uh, up and down, G-L-O-R-I-A. If you can see that right here, Miss Gloria. Yes. So somebody give me a G, a, a line that would be about Gloria. Good looking woman. <laughs> Good looking woman. What about L? Loving every day. Loving every day. Give me one about yourself, Miss Gloria, with an O <laughs> or an R. Um with an O or R. Uh, or, or, or mad. I'm going to do this one. Or mad at you if you did the wrong thing. I was just playing. <laughs> I'm just writing anyway. Or mad at you if you got on her nerves. How about that one? So all of these things have to be about me, descriptions about me, or what? <laughs> the poem is called Gloria. <laughs> Okay. So we're saying if we was writing about ice cream, we would write the word ice cream up and down, meaning uh -huh. like starting with the I, C, E, C. So then you write words going out from those letters, phrases or words or sentences that have to deal with ice cream. Okay. So an acrostic is just writing a poem with the let with the uh the actual word that you chose is going up and down is what you're actually talking about in the poem. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I got it. So we have respecto, R-I-S-P-E-T-T-O. Don't forget you all, if you have not written one of these short poetic forms, you still have a chance to feel free to. Sin Cain, C I N Q U A I N, Sin Cain. And we all, Lynn. we all went through, uh, we we all did the Sin Cain together. Uh, one second. Make it louder. Seems like this is so soft. It's not there. Oh, All right. The next one is haiku. H a i k u. Haiku, Miss Jean. Please mute yourself, love. Five is Horatian ode. H o r a t i a n o d e. Number six is limerick. L i m e r i c k. Limerick. Number seven is Nani, N-A-A-N-I, Nani. The poem that Mr. Running did today called a Nonet, N-O-N-E-T, Nonet. The number nine is Ateva Rima, O-T-T-A-V-A -T -T -A space R-I-M-A. Number 10 is a pantoum, P-A-N-T-O-U-M. And that's a tough one. <laughs> yep, that's the one Miss Sally just did. Sonnet, Miss Jean did a sonnet today, S-O-N-N-E-T. Number 12 is Spencerian, S-P-E-N-S-E-R-I-A-N. You can look up any of these forms and write about one next week. Tanka, T-A-N-K-A. 
Triolet, T R I O L E T, Triolet. And the last one is Villanelle. Today I want to give Miss Gloria and Miss Betty a funny poem to do for next week. Miss Jacqueline, I want you to do a funny poem uh, next week since you did not realize that that was a funny poem, uh, uh, ch uh, not challenge, but lesson. So Miss Gloria Langley, your funny poem is going to be about makeup. However you want to express makeup. Is mine going to be a vanilla? A vanilla? What kind of poem, funny poem, do you want me to write? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm about to tell you. Miss Jacqueline, do you want to still use the title youth or you want me to give you something new? Um, give me something new. All right. Your poem is going to be about the weather. Weather. So I'm writing it down. And Miss Betty, I want you to write a funny poem about feet. Feet. So it could be any form, any poetic form? It could be any poetic form you like. And I said to everybody last week that you might want to write about, meaning you, want, you might want your poem to be free verse. Free verse is basically writing any type of way or any type of style you like. So I can write any type of style I like about weather? Any style. It can be haiku, acrostic. It can be free verse. It can be blank verse, meaning like it doesn't have to rhyme. Okay. It's totally up to you. Okay. And I just want to give you all some pointers or some cues. If I say to write about feet, what kind of feet are there as it pertains to definitions? Me. <laughs> No, you have the feet that are on the end of your legs. You have those type of feet. What other kind of feet do you have? Animal feet. Animals. No, not. I'm not speaking of just feet as it pertains to what you walk on. Feet could be feet could be measurements on a ruler. Oh. You see okay. what I'm saying? Just because I said Distance. right about feet. It could be any type of feet. It doesn't have to be the feet that you think of with toes. It'd be funny. It would okay. Miss <laughs> Gloria Langley, I said right about makeup. There are several types of definitions for makeup. You could be talking about the makeup on your face. You could be talking about making up, like breaking up to make up. Right. You know, you think about how you want to express the, the uh, title that I gave you. It's up to you. Just because I said makeup, there are different definitions for makeup. Weather, uh, even however you think about weather and want to express it, that's up to you. You have to be creative with your writing. All uh, right. Before you go on, I can't see number 15 when you called it out. I couldn't see it. It's okay. What? It's Villanelle, V-I-L-L-A-N. E L L E. Okay, thank you. So, are you going to just surprise us with one of those poetic forms that uh, next week, or you want to? Well, you don't have to let us know which one you're going to do. If whatever, if once you um actually look them up, right, and see the re rules and stuff on them, just feel free to write about either one you like. Thank you. All right, thank you. Miss Sally Dawson, I'm going to give you a funny poem because I don't see your name up here. Nope. Sally, I want you to write about um, water. Who? Water. Water, okay. It has to be a funny poem about water, however you want to express that. Okay. 
Anybody else want to write a funny poem that's out there? Anybody else have any pieces to share? All right, I want to share another piece called Ella Tella. Hold on one second. This piece is called Ella Telephony. Ella Telephony by Laura Elizabeth Richards. Once there was an elephant who tried to use the telephant. No, no, I meant elephone who tried to use the telephone. Dear me, I am not certain quite that even now I've got it right. However, it was, he got his trunk entangled in the telephone. The more he tried to get it free, the louder buzzed the telephone. I fear I'd better drop the song of Ella Fop, Ella Hop, Ella Pop and Telephone. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> All that right. That was good. This is another one called Mosquito at My Ear. And you can just see some of these, the style of these poems, how short or goofy, you know, you can just be lighthearted in yourself. Mosquito at My Ear by Kobayashi Isa. Mosquito at my ear. Does he think I'm deaf? <laughs> it buzzing. <laughs> All right. So I have one more. Let's see. That was a pretty good one. Mosquito at my ear. Does he think I'm deaf? All right. This is called My Doggy Ate My Essay by Darren Sardell. Oh, yeah. My doggy ate my essay. He picked up all my mail. He cleaned my dirty closet and dusted with his tail. He straightened out my posters and swept my wooden floor. My parents almost fainted when he fixed my bedroom door. I did not try to stop him. He made my window shine. My room looked like a palace and my dresser smelled like pine. He fluffed up every pillow. He folded all my clothes. He even cleaned my fish tank with a toothbrush and a hose. I thought it was amazing to see him use a broom. I'm glad he ate my essay on how to clean my room. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's good. That's good. So, okay. let's uh, Tim. Yes, sir. I'd like to share a, a haiku. Okay, cool. Good job. Thank you so much. The haiku, it's called The Date. Uh, something you said reminded me of this poem. Okay. The Date. Pine Tree had a date. He rain showered, then splashed on pine saw cologne. What? <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. What? <laughs> the date. Okay. The date. All right. Pine tree had a date. He rain showered, then splashed on pine saw cologne. <laughs> <laughs> and he was all alone. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alone. Yes, he's still alone. Oh, standing tall. <laughs> that was so funny. I like it. <laughs> that was really, really oh, good. It didn't sound like real poets. Okay. Yes, <laughs> you are real poets. That really, that was really really good, Mr. Riley. Thank you so much. All right. All right, I think I'm going to do one more. We're going to conclude class today if you all don't have anything to share. You've done such a wonderful job um, sharing your pieces today. Thank you so much with all of that. That was really nice. Don't forget, again, to revise, revise your pieces, read them over, read them out aloud, 
uh, you could have uh, possibly, uh, if you had like some family functions for 4th of July or any functions coming up, uh, think about, you know, something that you could recite for before dinner for uh, Thanksgiving, you know, for your family. Uh, last year, we had a lesson to write uh, legacy poems. I want to go back into that before that time so that you all, what, what the legacy poems entail, you all leaving a message to your uh, friends, your family, your friends, or and the world about the legacy that you would like to leave behind for your family. That would be a very beautiful piece to read uh, before or right after the prayer uh, if you indulge in that type of thing for Thanksgiving. So think about that. All right. So this particular piece is going to be called If I Were in Charge of the World. If I were in charge of the world, I'd cancel oatmeal, Monday mornings, allergy shots, and also Sarah Steinberg. If I were in charge of the world, there'd be brighter nights, lights, healthier hamsters, or basketball baskets 48 inches lower. If I were in charge of the world, you wouldn't have lonely you wouldn't have clean. You wouldn't have bedtimes or don't punch your sister. You wouldn't even have sisters. If I were in charge of the world, a chocolate sundae with whipped cream and nuts would be a vegetable. All 007 movies would be G and a person who sometimes forgot to brush and sometimes forgot to flush would still be allowed to be in charge of the world. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Seems like a boy wrote that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, uh, I hope you all have fun writing. May I read a, may I read a quickie? You, 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 you inspired me? Of course you can read it. Okay. Quickie. If I were in charge, okay. If I were in charge of the world, wrinkles would be outlawed. There'd be no more aches and pains, and no one would have to use a cane. <laughs> That's good. You should expand on that. You should keep expanding on that and add some more to that piece. Oh, I just wanted to be a limerick, a quickie. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just saying it's really good that you should continue to expand oh. right on it more. So, um, uh, I think next week I'm also, I'm gonna write a poem about senior citizen students, but I'm also gonna write that trio let. For some reason I can't even remember if I, I, I yes, I did have a lesson. I did have a, I did have the, that was one of my lessons to do the trio let, and I'm wondering, did I even do it? So I was just looking through my journal really quick to see. Actually, I did write the triolet. So I'm going to let that one go and probably go to a new one. So the triolet that I had was called Of Hope. It was, it had an A, B, A, 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 B, A, B, Ryan scheme. And once you look up the piece, it'll show you just how to write it out. But the triolet of hope, it says, when will we return to Darnell, to the place where seniors shine? No one can quite foretell when we will return to Darnell and finally tell this pandemic farewell. Don't you think it's about time when we will return to Darnell, to the place where seniors shine? Oh, nice. That's All basically right. how you write a triolet and I've enjoyed class immensely today. Is there anyone else out there that has a piece to share? Yeah, this one is a little bit long. It's an ABC poem, and I, I wrote it, and you brought it to mind when it was about a legacy poem. Okay. And it touched me because uh, family members have asked me to read it to them when we were uh, on Zoom together. Uh, missing each other. So I wrote this, my legacy of sharing a smile. And remember this? I think you may remember this. And, and I, I went outside the guidelines for an ABC poem 
for a reason. A smile that I leave behind. A is for a smile that I leave behind. B is for its beauty, for being just mine. C is for the caring it gave to all who looked. D is for my Daniel, who it certainly hooked. E is for <laughs> eating that my smile stopped to allow. F is for the food that passed smiling lips anyhow. G is for giving a smile to all who went by. H is for the happiness it reflected in each passing eye. I is for the interest my smile left many to wonder. J is for the joy it cast out for a ponder. K is for the kisses my smiling lips gave. L is for the laughter my smile did save. M is for the many smiles that I share. N is for the numerous returning smiles they cared. O is for the openness of a smile that I have, that I leave behind. P is for the people who receive it in kind. Q is for the quaint little smiling hint. R is for its remembered short stint. S is for a smile that I leave behind. T is for the true gentle smile we find. U is for understanding a gift left for all. V is for leaving value by simply lifting lips up tall. W is for wearing curved lips up and wide. X is for Xerox copying my smile side by side. <laughs> y is for you to lovingly receive my smile in kind. Z is for zealously sharing a smile that I leave behind. You might have th thought that that was long, but the content of it really was uh, nice and uh, visual that you could, you really want to hear and see each line that has to deal with the smile, but bravo, well, really, really uh, good. The legacy we all should leave behind is just sometimes a smile and a wave will yes, make a so good, great job, Miss Vicky. That was really <laughs> beautiful. Uh, Mr. Ronnie, Miss Vicky, and Miss Jean, do you want a new subject for making writing a funny poem for next week? You don't have to. Okay, give me a subject. Mr. Ronnie, I can't hear you. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a try. Okay, good job. All right, let me erase what you had. <clears throat> Miss Jean, ma'am, however you want to relay the subject, it's up to you. I want you to write write about the birds and the bees. Whoops! <laughs> oh my birds goodness. and the bees. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ronnie, I want you to write about uh, a sense of humor, like having a sense of humor. Okay. However you want to express that is up to you. I mean, so many ways and levels you can go on how whatever that means to you you write about that and miss vicky i would like for you to write about okay. books 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 write about books but make it funny is it because of my background with all of my books i just i actually i did see that and then i thought about uh okay how how about i change it I'm changing to hairstyles. Oh no, is it because of my nappy hair? No. <laughs> nappy, <laughs> nappy. <laughs> hairstyles. Okay, I can, I'll do both. Books and I'll do both, oh good job. So there are many titles and references to just uh, writing and literature and books that you can write something funny. So I have Mr. Runny down for a sense of humor. Miss Vicky, hairstyles and books. 
G. Birds and the Bees. Jacqueline Lattimore has weather. Sharon Hartnett, food. Kim Wright, students. Gloria Langley, makeup. Betty Coleman, feet. Sally Dawson, water. All right. So thank you all so much. That was such a fun class. I hope you all agree. And I can't wait until we um, actually come back to the facility to have our poetry slam. We're going to have a great event where we are spotlighting and uh, highlighting your literary works and you'll be able to go on stage. Don't forget that being able to perform on stage with your spoken word deals with uh, a lot of different components like uh, acting. You know, you may want to use different sounds, voices when you are reciting your works. You may want to use body language, faces, uh, you might do some type of small skit. Uh, be creative. If you were to write a piece coming from the, the personality or mind of a man and woman, maybe you're going to be having some type of a costume or makeup that will lend you to be half man and half woman. I don't know. You know, so don't forget that on stage, you can wear costumes, have different voices. If you need props, those are the type of things you want to start to think about for our upcoming uh, Poetry Slam. And we're going to make it really grown and sexy by having uh, some other types of things going on during the slam. Like maybe we have some vendors, we'll probably have some live music and so forth. So. Once we come uh, to the facility for the, in the classroom setting, I'll still, uh, for people that don't feel comfortable, I'll still have class going on virtually so that you will be able to be a part of everything and you won't miss anything. So just uh, keep that uh, open, keep that open in your mind and think of some ideals and even jot down some things that you might be interested in as it pertains to uh, your performances. Uh, I was just thinking of something, Mr. Ronnie, you might decide to do some type of writing or performance about yourself and your alter ego or your other person, Cosmos. Maybe they are uh, speaking to each other or having something going on in one setting of a, a writing. If you were about to say something, you have to unmute yourself. Um, no, I'm, I'm just listening. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say that would be like a great performance, too, to be Ronnie and Cosmos, you know, like, you know, two different personalities or something to that nature. And also, if you all want a uh, nom de plume, which is a pen name or a stage name, think about that as well. All right. So my name is Kimberly Wright. Thanks for joining Word Up, the class Hello. all about poetry, short stories, and spoken word. I've had such a wonderful time with you all today. Please keep up the great writings, and I will see you all next class. Thank you. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you all.